Hello everyone. In this problem, we are given a 2D grid of positive numbers. Starting in the top left corner and only moving right or down, our goal is to find the path which minimizes the sum of numbers to the bottom right corner and return the sum of that path. So in this example, we would return 8 because the minimal path is the one I've highlighted in green and that sums to 8. So now that you know what the problem is, let's come up with a solution. Something to realize is that the final answer can be solved if you know the answer to these sub-problems. The final answer is going to be the minimum sum starting from the top left to this bottom right corner. Let's represent this question as min sum of row column. So for this 4x4 four four grid, the bottom right is going to be min sum of index 3, 3. To answer min sum 3, 3, let's pretend we already have the answer to this question for the grid position above, min sum 2, 3, and also to the left, min sum 3, 2. If we have these two sub-problem values, then we know the answer is going to be the value of the grid at the 3, 3 position plus the minimum of the 3, 2 or 2, 3 position. We know this because since the path can only travel down or right, the only two ways to get to position 3, 3 is from 3, 2 or 2, 3. So whichever of these two paths has the smaller sum is going to be the better answer. We can generalize this pattern to all cells. The min sum for any position ij is going to be the grid value of ij plus the minimum of min sum i minus 1j and min sum ij minus 1. Once we understand this concept, it's easy to come up with a brute force recursive solution. The recursive solution calls a helper function. The helper function accepts the row and column of the position of the min sum subproblem we are trying to solve. The initial call is going to be the bottom right corner since that is the final answer we want to solve. The recursive case is exactly the same as the generalized solution we were talking about earlier. The value of the grid plus the min of the subproblem for the cell above and to the left. The base case is the top left corner. The answer for the top left corner is just the grid value itself because you start in the top left corner and no positions can move into it. And finally we have two edge cases. Those are if you are in the first row or first column. If you're in the first row, there isn't a position that moves down into your position. So we get rid of the row minus one sub problem from consideration. Similarly, if you're in the first column, then there is no position that can move to the right into the current position. So we remove the call minus one sub problem from consideration. The time complexity for this solution is O of 2 raised to the n plus m because each recursive call can branch to two more and the max depth of recursion is on the order of the width plus the height of the grid. The extra space is n plus m which comes from the max depth of the recursive stack. We can easily improve our brute force solution by adding some memoization. In our main function, we create a memo the same size as the grid Initially, it starts with all negative ones, which symbolizes that this position of the memo has not been filled yet. We introduce a new if statement in the helper that checks if the subproblem has already been computed and thus stored in the memo. If it has, we can exit early, returning the memo value. The other cases are the same, but instead we store the answer in a variable and fill out the memo first for later recursive calls before returning our answer. This gets our time complexity to nm because now we only have to solve nm subproblems prior to each recursive call exiting early rather than spawning more recursive calls. Our space complexity goes up to nm because of the size of the memo. The final solution is the bottom-up dynamic programming solution that does not use recursion. It goes back to this side where we generalize that the subproblem for ij can be solved if you know the subproblems of the left and up positions. We can solve those subproblems by computing the subproblems from left to right and top to bottom with a double for loop. Here's the code. You can see how the main recurrence relation is the same as the equation from above. Similar to the recursive solution, we have two edge cases. The first column cannot take a path from the left, only from above, so it only considers the position above it. 
and similar case for the top row, which can't take a path from above, only from the left, so it only considers the subproblem to the left. And finally, the final answer is in the bottom right position. The time complexity of the solution is O of nm for the outer and inner for loop, which fills out the subproblems. For space, in this version of the solution, I am reusing the provided grid, so there's no extra space. However, your interviewer might not allow this. Your interviewer might say that the grid is a const variable, and in that case, you would want to make a separate DP table to store the answers. That would cost O of n times m. Okay, that concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck on all your interviews.